Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at one really hard GCSE biology question on bile and digestion. This is going to be aimed at grade 7, grade 8 and grade 9 students, the ones that really, really want to succeed in their exams. Hi everyone. Okay, so we're going to look at a hard question about bile and lipid digestion with lipase enzymes. This is a common question because it's linked to a practical, it's linked to digestion, it links to bile, it links to kind of some equipment, so it's got everything. A student set up the following experiment to investigate the digestion of fats in milk by lipase enzymes. Immediately when I'm thinking about a practical involving enzymes, I'm thinking there's got to be some temperature and pH involved because they are going to be involved in whether or not it affects the rate of reaction. They mixed milk with some sodium carbonate, which is an alkali, water and the lipase. In a second experiment, the water was replaced with bile. A pH meter was used to record the pH of the mixture in, ev in each experiment every two minutes. So helpfully they told you sodium carbonate is an alkali. They're not always going to do that. So just knowing that sodium carbonate, same as sodium hydroxide, for example, a couple of examples of alkalis that we should know, just in case they didn't tell you that it was an alkali. We're using bile. So thinking about what I know about bile, I'm going to need to probably use it at some point in this question. So we know it helps to digest fats and it's released from the liver. So just getting my head in the game of what we think bile is going to do. And then we're using a pH meter. You can see that in the diagram and they're going to record that pH every two minutes. So we're measuring a quantitative measurement over a set amount of time. And we assume that they've treated them exactly the same way, except obviously we've got bile replaced with water. So the first question is explain why. So we know that means give reasons for. First of all, explain why the student set the water bath to 37 degrees. And we get two marks for this question. So we've got to think about what two points are we going to say? So what is the reason why is this temperature important in this experiment? Why is it important that they did it at 37 degrees C? Why is it important that they kept it in a water bath at that temperature? So in enzyme questions, we always have to be thinking about the optimum conditions. So what pH and what temperature are the enzymes we're looking at going to need and going to want best? 37 degrees comes up a lot in questions like this because human enzymes always work best or their optimum is always around human body temperature which is 37 degrees. If there's ever a question about why someone has set something up to be 37 degrees for an experiment then the reason is most of the time because it's body temperature and there'll be a reason most likely that there's enzymes involved that come from the body. Thinking about pH and enzymes in the body, we've got two kind of areas where enzymes work. So we've got the stomach, which is pepsin and the protease enzymes, and they need a low pH. Or you've got all of the enzymes that then work either in the mouth or in the small intestine, and they tend to be alkaline pH because bile creates an alkaline environment and it lowers that pH. It neutralizes the stomach acid, increases the pH. Um, reduces the acidity in the small intestine, ready for those enzymes to work. So my answer for part I is quite easy. So I need to explain why 37 degrees. So because 37 degrees is human body temperature, and then we need to say why that's important, because the lipase enzymes optimum temperature will be 37 or will be body temperature. So part I is just asking, why did we add sodium carbonate? Remember it told us in the question that that's an alkaline. So it's basically saying, why did the student make the mixture alkaline to start with? So thinking about what we've already talked about in terms of enzymes, we know that we need the alkaline as an optimum pH for our lipase enzyme because it works in the small intestine normally. Also, what else can we say? Thinking about the fact that we are measuring pH, the pH isn't going to increase. And if when we see the next part of the question, you'll see why you could have thought ahead to this. If we know what we're probably going to get asked about, why are we measuring pH? It's because the pH is going to decrease, because the fats are going to be broken down into acids. Then if we started at neutral or acidic, we'd see less of a difference. So starting alkaline also allows us to really see the change that we're going to see. So that's an also a valid answer to this question if you thought about that. So I'm going to put both here as options. So first option to answer II 
is because lipase works in the small intestine and it has an optimum pH that's alkaline or around eight to nine, or so that a difference or a change in the pH can be seen as the pH is going to decrease or become more acidic. So this is still a valid answer. I would suggest that there's a potential it might get marks in an exam, but it's about knowing and having looked ahead and read the rest of the question first, or at least know where they're going to go with asking this question and thinking about why we're measuring pH. So that's kind of looking at it from a more practical point of view. So then we've got the results now. So we've got a results table that shows the results of these two experiments. And it's asking us, why does the pH of both mixtures decrease from nine? So we both start on zero at nine as a pH. So why, explain why, so give reasons why the pH of both mixtures decreases from nine. That basically means why does it get more acidic? So all it's asking us here is what is happening in both experiments that's going to make the pH more acidic as time goes on. So we've already alluded to this, but it's because the lipase enzymes are breaking down or digesting the lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. Fatty acids are acids. There's a clue in the name. So we're producing acids. So that's the reason why. So my answer is simply because fatty acids are being produced. Now, it wouldn't be enough here to get them up to just say acids, because that, that's obvious. It, you need to show your understanding of where those acids are coming from. So you have to say fatty acids, which is why I've underlined them here in order to get this mark. So part C, suggest one reason why both mixtures have the same pH at the end of the investigation. So it suggest question, remember, is not necessarily something you will have been taught it's not necessarily something, a fact you are expected to know. You are using your knowledge, the evidence in front of you, or common sense based on what you can see in the question to think up an answer to this question. So they want one reason why in both mixtures we got to pH 7.6 at the end of the investigation. So I would say really see what this question is asking you is what is pH measuring? What is it a measurement of in this example? And given what we've just said in the question before, what that means is pH in this experiment is effectively a measure of how much fatty acids are being produced in the same time in each experiment. Now, if we look at the bottom of experiment two, like towards the end of experiment two, where it's 7.6, 7.6, 7.6, .6, the pH is no longer changing. It's no longer decreasing, which means that no more fatty acids are being produced here. So the reaction is effectively stopped at 10 minutes. So equally, it gets to 7.6 for experiment one as well, just later. But we are saying, why does it get to 7.6 and stop for both reactions? So what would stop an enzyme reaction? We talked about this earlier. We need to think about temperature. Well, we know it's not temperature because they're being kept in a water bath at constant temperature. So it's not that. Could it be pH? Yes, pH is changing in this experiment. But also, why would an enzyme reaction just end most of the time? Because the substrate has run out. There is no more substrate that can be broken down. So both of those are options that we could put here. So option one, which is you could use for any enzyme question, really, if it's asking you the same thing. All of the fats, because that's our substrate here, all the fats have been digested. So no more fatty acids can be produced. That makes sense? No more fatty acids are being made, probably because the substrate that they're being made from, the fats that have to be broken down to release the fatty acids, have all been used up. And then our other thing we talked about was pH. So the pH is decreasing throughout the experiment. And we said at the start that the enzymes need an alkaline pH to work best. So if the pH has decreased to seven, nearly, then we could suggest that the pH of the mixture has decreased so much that the lipase has denatured and so it can't function anymore. It can no longer break down the fats. Now we have only got to 7.6, but that doesn't mean that there can be a very narrow window for the lipase to work about between eight and nine, we normally say. So that could be an easy explanation. Now, either of these can be correct and either of these can get marks. And that's often the way we suggest questions. When it's suggesting there's options, it's just asking you to think of something. Then often there's 
marks for multiple different ways of responding to this question. So first thing we could say would be because all the fat in the milk has been digested, end of story. It's only one mark, so it doesn't need to be long and complicated. You can say no more fatty acids are being produced because all the fat in the milk has been digested. Or we're saying because the pH has got so low or has become low and the lipase or the enzyme has been denatured. So now it's asking us to look at the table. Bile helps lipase to digest fats. It doesn't say how it helps, and that's probably because we're going to be asked that later. And it doesn't say, but the idea that it helps suggests that it, it helps it to happen faster. And we, we know that, or we should know that. But we can figure that out from the data in the table anyway. But what evidence is there in the table to support the conclusion that bile is helping the fats to be digested? So that means, how is it helping it to happen faster? Or how is it improving the digestion of the fats while well, it's helping it to happen faster? What evidence can we find there? So if we're looking for evidence in a table, we're probably going to need to look at the numbers. We're going to, need to look at patterns or both. And we need to look for evidence we've just said that stuff's happening faster. So what is evidence of something happening faster? Well, if we need evidence of something that ha something, in this case, the pH decrease is happening faster, we need to look at rate. So evidence that a certain point was reached quicker or that there is an increase in the rate of change. We don't have rate in the table, but we have numbers that are changing and the time that they are changing in. So remember, rate is just change over time. So an increase in rate of reaction shows you something's happening faster or if two experiments are reaching the same point and one of them does that first, also shows it's happening faster. We've got both of those bits of information here and this is a two mark question. So we need to say two things. So I've picked two time points just because there's a difference between four and eight. I know it's just four, it's easy. We've doubled the time. So in that time, let's look at the difference then in the decrease of pH. So for experiment two with bile, we decreased by one pH in four minutes, whereas with water, we decreased by 0 0.3 in four minutes. So that already tells me that the rate is happening faster for experiment two because there's a greater change in the same amount of time. So a greater decrease or drop in pH for the bile than the water for the same amount of time. If you're not sure if something is happening faster or slower, because you've not got a nice line of a graph to look at and you're using a table, this is how you would work it out. It's very easy to calculate rate. It's very easy to just look for the patterns of rate by doing what we've just done. We've also got that evidence that experiment two reaches 7.6 at 10 minutes, whereas experiment one doesn't reach 7.6 until 14 minutes. Um, and that experiment two kind of levels off. So we've also got that evidence there. If you can't see that from just looking at this table, you can always kind of imagine what that line would look like if you plotted it out. And so you could just sketch yourself a little graph where you can see I've got that flat line at the end for line uh, experiment two, where it's 7.6, 7.6, 7.6. And whereas we don't really start decreasing for experiment one straight away, but they're not going to hit that same point of 7.6 until the very, very end. So you've got that line for water, that line for bile. Sometimes you'll be given this as a graph, but if you're given it anything like a table looking at comparing them, you can always kind of imagine in your mind what this would look like on a graph and sketch it out. So we've got that levelling off of bile happening sooner than water. So that's our other piece of evidence that the bile is helping to digest the fats faster. So we've got rate and we've got the levelling off happening earlier or, the, or reaction finishing earlier. So that's what our answer is going to be. So um, when we're trying to get enough to say two marks. So in experiment two, there's a faster rate of pH decrease and the pH levels off at 10 minutes. Whereas for experiment one, it does not reach 7.6 until 14 minutes. We could also add in our rate calculation. So sometimes they could ask you to calculate it, calculate rate. Sometimes they could ask you to use evidence from the table and say they want you to show your calculations. So in this example, we could put something like the rate from four to eight minutes was 0 0.25 for bile and 0 0.075 for water. 
And we've just got those numbers by dividing the 0 0.3, which is the difference for water, and the one by four, because it's per minute. So that could add extra to our answer. And if you've done the working out briefly anyway, just to kind of get an idea of the rate change and what was happening, then you might as well put it in your answer because it's only going to help and support it. Okay, so last question here now. Explain why the addition of bile changed the rate of the digestion of the lipids. So our old friend, explain why, we need reasons why. How does it change? It doesn't say in this question how the rate changed. We know the rate increased because we've just worked it out and we've just talked about that in the previous question. So they clearly didn't want to give the answer away in the next part of the question. But we just need to assume that they're meaning in this question, then explain why adding bile increased the rate of digestion of the lipids. So why were lipids broken down faster or digested faster when the bile was there versus when the bile wasn't? This question is just asking you what bile does. It is just a knowledge question. Using your knowledge just to say what bile does and how that helps digest fats quicker. It's actually nothing really to do with the question, as long as you know that bile is helping and increasing the speed that the fats are being digested. It's just a knowledge question. So hopefully we should know that bile emulsifies fats. Now, what does that mean? It breaks large fat droplets down into small fat droplets. Now, unless they ask you to explain emulsification directly in the question, Saying that bile emulsifies the fats is probably enough to get you the mark for that, that mark there. So then we need to kind of link that idea of emulsification and how that helps the fats actually be digested faster. So it increases the surface area that the fats lipids have. So it increases the surface area of the lipids for the lipase enzyme to work on, to bind to, to act on, however you want to say. But there's more surface area of lipid that then the lipase enzyme can bind to and start working on digesting. That's why it happens faster. So we need to add all of that without necessarily the explanation of what emulsification is. If you can't remember the word emulsifies, just say that description and that should be enough. The describing emulsification will get you marks as well. And so we need to link emulsification, surface area and like rate of reaction or fast, faster reaction. So bile emulsifies the fats in the milk. Remember to try and make it specific to this question. This increases the surface area of lipids for the lipase enzyme to bind to. Therefore, lipids with the bile are digested faster. Now I've underlined the keywords here that we're getting marks for. We're getting marks for saying emulsifies. You can describe instead if you wanted to. Increasing the surface area is the second mark. And then the last one is sort of linking that to the fact that they increased the rate of digestion or they were digested faster than with water. Okay, so that's that question done. Hopefully that was helpful. Remember, all of this is applicable to pretty much any enzyme question, a lot of this. A lot of it's applicable to any fat or lipid question, especially about the acid and the changing the pH or the things like why there's a water bath or why we need to keep that pH um, at a starting point. All of this is kind of relevant to other enzyme questions as well, but specifically, this is a really typical lipid fatty acid bile question that they often use. So hopefully that was helpful. Ouch. This is why in some videos I like explain scratches.